So in this video, Emily's going to paint uh, this painting here that you see finished, and you're going to watch her paint it. And um, I, uh, she mentions in this video several times that I tell her that she's not going fast enough and that she's not, that she's focusing too much on the detail. And that's um, really, she has a lot of experience. She's done, you know, 20 paintings or more uh, following my method, and I'm sort of trying to push her to to not worry so much about getting everything exactly the way she sees it. And especially in something like this rock wall, or if you're painting a bunch of leaves or foliage or something, you can imagine if you were painting you know, some leaves or this rock wall that she painted, if you go in there and you try to paint every little leaf exactly the way you see it, every little shape, every little you know, same number of leaves and the same exact pattern, that takes just forever. And, and, and so when I paint landscapes, when I'm painting foliage or, or something like this rock wall, instead of going in there and verbatim trying to copy every single line and every single little rock, I'll just take my brush and just draw a jumble of lines, you know, starting off with my darks. And when I do that, I'm not really trying to do it, paint it even the exact number of lines, the angles might be different, it's a different shapes, but the character of it is similar to what I'm looking at. And to paint that way, it's much, much faster than trying to, you know, verbatim paint everything. So those are the two points I wanted to make. Um, so just keep in mind that Emily has a lot of experience um, and also this is talking about painting abstract things specifically like this rock wall that she's painting or in, in foliage and some you know if you were painting a jumble of leaves or, or, or something like that. Um, so without further ado here's Emily painting the two doors uh, from a photograph that she took while she was in Haiti. Here I am uh just drawing out my guidelines on the canvas. It really helped me sort of see each segment in a smaller piece, because it's, it's a pretty big painting, these doors. Using my proportional divider, just to mark the, the, key, the key points of the painting on each of the doors. I, was pro I probably marked way too much. I really didn't need to draw as much detail as I did, but it just sort of made me feel better. And I'm mixing my colors. I try to make pretty big piles because I knew that it's a big painting and it was going to take me a while to paint. And I wanted my paint to stay wet. And the bigger the pile, the better. Starting painting here, always with the with the darkest color, which is obviously black, filling in the darkest parts of the door. So this is the if you're looking at the painting overall, this is the right door. And it had much more, I guess rusting is what it was. In reality, it's it's rust. It's where the blue paint had flaked off, so it had a lot more of this dark, of the dark colors. Always build the darks first. And Mark always reminds me as well to, that I, to paint the darks larger than they actually are, to overpaint the darks, because you can easily come back and paint the lights over the darks if you need to. And I'm coming in now with a couple of steps. First, a couple of steps from black and now with even lighter, the even lighter rusty colors on the door. And I'm being way too exact. It's taking me so much longer than it has to. Over and over, Mark would try to tell me that I'm focusing too much on the detail to just move on lay it in and move on and I think as the painting went on I got better at it but this was the first door the the one on the right and I just couldn't move on as quickly as I wanted to and as quickly as he wanted me to and I'm starting with the blue colors 
the blue row and the darkest ones first, obviously. And it was a challenge because as you can see in the photo, the reference photo, you know, some of the colors look smeared and I didn't want to leave that out because I really, I really like that about the door. It looks, it looks dirty. Um, so I, I wanted to be messy and I think maybe if I'd painted with a larger paintbrush, I could have moved a little bit faster. But over and over, Mark, is, Mark was trying to remind me, okay, you're doing great, your colors are great, your values are right on, which is very important. However, you're focusing too much on the detail. And I did have to use some power blue in my blues here just to kick them up a notch. I couldn't quite get that aqua blue from the Geneva palette. I had to use a power blue, but not very much. It was pretty easy to get the blue after. I just used a little bit of the power blue. And it's really difficult for me to watch myself paint now. It's because I want us to say, go for it. Why are you being so tentative with your paintbrush? Just go for it, lay it in, you got it, keep going. Um, but while I was doing it, I, it's like I'm so worried I'm messing it up that I can't move on as quickly as I should. And but it's like I lack, I lack you know I lack the confidence to paint as boldly as I want to, and maybe with more practice I will. I mean I have been painting for a while, but it's not something I do on a full time basis. So. I don't have the confidence I need to, to paint boldly like I want to. Still laying in some of the blues. I do feel like I'm still a little hesitant. And what I, ha what I have to remind myself is, okay, no one is gonna see the reference photo. So it doesn't even matter if it doesn't match perfectly. It just has to look like a door that has rust on it. A door that was, that's old, that was painted blue, and now the paint is flaking off and the door is rusting. So if I, if I focus on that, then I can paint a little bit more boldly. And maybe it's because I've painted more portraits than, than you know, just objects that I tend to just focus so much on getting it right, getting it to match as closely as I can to the to the reference photo because in portraiture you have to get the likeness and you do ha you do need to figure out how to get the likeness and you got to put those key points in the right place. But with a door, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> Not like it does with the portrait. So at this point, I'm trying to make it look, I need to add more noise because as you can see the, the reference photo, the door, it's just mess. It's just a mess. It's really messy. And I probably should have done it even more. I was just afraid I was going to mess it up too much. Mark, uh, he would say, okay, you're focusing too much on the details and you're painting too literally. Stop painting so literally. It's doors, it doesn't have to be perfect, go for it. <laughs> so I would try to go for it, and I would, it, I would do it for a while, but then I would go back into my old habits of trying to be exact. And my brush strokes are too tedious. It took way longer than it needed to. It did. I. It's a large painting for one thing, and it took a long time. These bricks, I really just focused so much on each brick, each brick, and I did not have to do that. 
And if you look at the overall painting, if you compare the bricks on the right door to the bricks on the left door, you can tell that the bricks on the left door are painted much more loosely and probably took half the time to paint the bricks on the right door. They're, I don't think they're any better, the ones on the right and the ones on the left. It's just more tight. It's more tight, painted more tight, more literally. But obviously, when you see the overall painting, the bricks on the left, it's bricks. You can tell it's bricks, and that's all that really matters. The values are correct. You know, I painted them much more quickly. I painted them overall the same. The darks first, building your shadows, not polluting your shadows. But I guess by that point, I was more confident. I felt more comfortable. And I was just tired of painting with these same colors. I get bored, you know, like this big painting. It's all, it's the same colors. Okay, I've got another door. And so I was more um, confident in my brush strokes. I painted more quickly. I was more loose with the, with the door on the left. So you guys let me know which one you like better. They are different looking doors, but especially the bricks on the left, I was, I painted way more quickly. And again, Mark is always saying value is, is king. Value, value, value. Now I'm laying in the shadows of the concrete. And again, it has to be abstract because that's what the concrete looks like, but the exact pattern and the exact shapes does not matter at all. And I did overpaint the shadows which was fine. I, I painted them more large than was in the photo because I went back later and painted over the, the darks easily with the lighter colors. Still, well, this is, yeah, this is one step from black, laying in some of the more of the dark colors and too much detail because it just really doesn't matter. It just needs to look like a concrete wall, you know? It's a concrete wall, there's some bricks mixed in, and that's all that, that's all your eyes want to see or have to see to understand, oh, this is a brick wall. I mean, this is a concrete wall with some bricks mixed in. And I, and I, and painting with a larger brush. I just made myself, I'm like, I'm, oh, well, now I went to a smaller brush. I should have stayed with the larger brush because I think it would have moved much more quickly and it probably would have been better. And I changed brushes again. This brush has more of a softer edge, which I wanted. It helps with blending the lighter, lighter colors and with the darker colors. I think because Mark is constantly saying, build your shadows, don't pollute your shadows, I'm a little bit, if anything, I'm a little bit afraid of going in and making my uh, I'm afraid of polluting my shadows. So I overpaint the darks, and then when I do come in with the lighter steps, I don't, I'm not confident with that. I, I, I don't paint them as large as I should, if that makes any sense. And therefore, the, you know, the, the shadows, which is the dark parts, the shadows and the like ridges and the, uh, oh, here I am rolling a brush. I really, anyway, the ridges are larger than in the actual painting, going back to what I was saying. So to roll the brush, I really, I tried rolling a brush for, a first, for the first time and 
I got better at it as the painting went on. It's just adding noise. It's adding noise because it's it was a very noisy painting. It's messy. There's not really. You just have to do it to sort of, or at least I did. I just had to keep doing it to get a feel for it. To get the get the right look. So going back to what I was saying about how my crevices look and shadows are bigger and darker than in the painting, basically my wall looks older and more um, in worse shape than the one in the reference photo because I made my crevices bigger and darker, and I and I left them like that. <clears throat> I'm finally coming in with the highlights, the highlights of the concrete wall, lightening it up. And it was fun to come in. So you can see that it's the sun shining on the wall. That's what makes those highlights and trying to sort of make it look like the sun filtering through a tree or a sun filtering through you know, a plant, it was a tree, I guess, and making these spots of sunlight, that, that was fun to paint. So I let that door dry, and now I'm coming back and I'm painting this plant. So this is wet on dry. And by this time, I was a little bit more, um, confident and focused on just laying it in and not really worrying about it looking exactly like the photo. So I'm first coming in with the darkest greens, trying to keep it, keep it ab abstract because in nature that that's what you encounter is, is abstract abstractness. That's how that's how I wanted to wanted it to look. It was completely abstract. And I knew that if I just got the values right, it would look just fine. This was pretty fun this was pretty fun to to paint. For whatever reason, I'm not intimidated by trees because you can get away with a lot when you paint a little plant or a little tree. I painted my daughter many years ago and it was, I took the photo outside and there was a lot of plants and I, oh, that painting took so long because I was trying to paint it literally. and. Maybe I learned my lesson on that painting that by the end of it, I think just like a, by the end of this one, I was painting more loosely. I was like, okay, this is taking way too long. And I can't even tell a difference if it takes me an hour to paint the little tree or if it takes me 20 minutes to paint the little tree. So, and now I'm just putting in these shadows where the little tree, little plant is making a shadow on the inside of the brick wall. And I'm coming in with the highlights of the tree. Just saying, okay, where do I see them over there? Okay, I basically see them here. Just, just blob it in. Doesn't have to be the exact shape. However, it does need to be an abstract pattern. Not just like bam, 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 right in a row. It has to be abstract. And that brush that I'm using right there is, I, I really liked it because it makes soft, it's pretty soft. And as you can see in the reference photo, the plant has, it's kind of frilly on the edges. So that was a good brush to use for that. I think that's one of the lightest steps. Maybe there might be some yellow I come in with, but just trying to keep it abstract. There we go. There's the yellow. 
I think that's the very lightest of the light in the little tree. That was, that was really fun to paint. But even still, I mean, even this, which this took way shorter than many other things, I, I want to just tell myself, okay, you're doing great. Keep going. Go faster. Just go for it. Now just adding some extra noise in the, in the shadow. I don't know if you guys struggle with that as well. Sort of overthinking, overthinking. Now, obviously, if this was, if I was trying to paint hyperrealism, it would matter. But I was tr actually trying to paint this more abstractly, and I had no idea how difficult it would be. Let's see. So this is the left door. See my bricks? Are they okay? I, they look fine. I put those in way faster than I did the other bricks because Mark, I was getting really tired of Mark telling me over and over, you're painting too slowly, you're looking too much at, you're focusing too much on the details. You'll do fine if you just lay it in and keep going. So now I'm laying in the shadows of the plants. There are these vines hanging down and I'm starting with the shadows, the darkest darks. Well, I guess some of those are, there was, there are these weird bean looking things on the vines that I was painting in initially and also shadows on the wall. And this is also painted wet on dry. I allowed the painting to dry and then I came back in on top of it because if I didn't, it would completely s smear it. And this was pretty fun to paint as well because I knew it did not have to be exact because no one's going to say, wait a minute, I recognize that plant. That doesn't look exactly right. It just doesn't matter. It's a vine. It's, I think it was actually two different types of plants mixed in there. Now it is important that the, the values are correct and that I did build them slowly, that I started with the darkest and moved up to the, to the highlights. Yeah, those are those bean, beany look, bean parts of the plant. And now I'm putting in these long parts of the vine, which that was really fun too, because I knew it didn't have to be exact. And those did vary in color. Some of them would be light, dark, light, dark, just because the way the sun was shining on them. But most of them were pretty light color. And the reason I painted those in first is because I didn't want to smear anything else. So I painted the long vines in initially and then came back with the leaves and blotted in the leaves. You'll see. And I, I wanted to know where to paint the leaves. Obviously, they need to be on the vine. So I'm sticking with the browns. I noticed I needed to put some more brown in the top. I thought, I need more vines. I didn't put enough vines. And actually, I put in extra plants in the top as well. Because I thought the right side needed some vines. Just a few. I didn't put in a lot, but some. And I'm starting with the darkest couple steps of the leaves 
of the vine. And I'm trying to, as Mark says, just go for it. Not worrying so much about exactness. But also you trying to stay abstract, not any recognizable patterns. Keep it abstract. Sometimes I do, I would sort of find, try to find a leaf that I liked the shape of and replicate that. If there was a couple of leaves that I saw that, oh, I like the shape of that leaf. It looks sort of like a heart. And I would try to mimic that. But otherwise, I just blob it, just blob the paintbrush. And I'm probably painting these too dark, but I will come back and paint the highlights in. These over here, I remember not even noticing. I mean, I really didn't even notice them much until I started, oh, there are some leaves over here. And for some reason right now, it looks like my colors are off. And I, but I guess I, I come back in with more yeah, the more yellow highlight. I think my vines look like they're a little bit more spread out, perhaps. But does it matter? It does not matter. It still looks like vines and leaves cascading in front of a door. That's all that matters. Oh yeah, so there's my yellow highlights coming in. And then even more highlights. This was fun, and it was especially fun because it was one of the last things I painted, and I knew that I was about to be finished. So I'm fixing the shadow. See how the shadow was the wrong shape initially? Because it just didn't make sense, because, you know, it's coming from the arch of the uh, bricks. It needed to be more archy, <laughs> more rounded. So I, f I wanted to come back and fix that. And just making it more messy, basically. And I probably could have even made it more messy, but um, it's like I'm scared to make it too messy because then how do you make it unmessy? Which you can, but. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to go past that point of messiness to make it just look like, you know, really bad. So I, I'm pretty conservative with making my paintings look messy or noisy rather. So this is what I added because I wanted some vines on the right side of the painting as well as the left, and this is not on the reference photo. But obviously I looked at the reference photo to match the colors, but I'd already painted, I'd just painted them, so I had all the right colors there. I'd already mixed all the leaf colors. And this was, you know, just artistic license, which anyone can do. I wanted it to be more balanced I guess is the word. It didn't feel balanced because all, there was all these green vines on the left side and nothing on the right side. There was a plant down at the bottom but at the top there weren't any vines so I wanted to add some. And I'm coming back in now I wanted to do this wet on dry make some of these highlights on the concrete more bright because I wanted it to look like the sunshine filtering through the vines. It needed more highlights. 
I thought. Or maybe Mark said he thought it needed more highlights. That's probably what happened. Because I was so ready to be finished with this painting at this point. <laughs> and still rolling my brush. You should definitely try it. It's really fun. And, you know, obviously different brushes make different marks. And here it is finished. I hope you like it. It took a really long time to paint, but I'm, I'm satisfied with it. I'm, I'm happy with it. If you go to drawmixpaint.com, you can find links to all my free videos. If you go to genevafineart.com, you can find out all about the paint that I use to paint with, that I manufacture myself right here in Austin, Texas. And thank you so much for watching.